Hi, I'm Thomas Blood. This is the third part of my masterclass series on sustainability and the cloud for the AWS Institute. In the first session, I talked about sustainability concepts and introduced a mental model called Future Fit Framework, which describes four levels of effort or complexity to address sustainability. Level one concerns sustainable IT operations. Level two is focused on sustainable operations overall. Level three supports innovation for sustainability products, services, and business models. And level four are efforts to transform organizations to have sustainability as a new core and nature-based economy. In the previous session, I discussed how levels one and two work. In this session, we will take a look at the role of innovation. Let me start by saying that we believe that sustainability has the potential of becoming one of the largest economic opportunities since the advent of the internet. Sustainability represents a $12 trillion commercial and innovation opportunity by 2030. Half of the innovation the world needs to transition to a net zero economy from 2030 to 2050 do not yet exist. The World Economic Forum defines net zero as removing an equal amount of CO2 from the atmosphere as we release into it. Fear of change is something we will have to manage carefully. Let me start with a concept we call guardrails, not gates. Guardrails enable teams to go much faster without the need for time-consuming governance processes that often require approval chains or convening governance boards. Instead, guardrails are a type of constraint that provide rule-based governance and prevent actions that don't conform to policies. Because guardrails act as a safety net, they give us confidence, allowing us to begin building sooner and to include more people in the process. Guardrails allow us to offer self-service while maintaining governance and control. This is freedom within a framework. The process starts with boldly imagining the future we need and then find ways to build it. I know that you're, what you're thinking, we have lots of great ideas, but we cannot possibly build them because, insert your favorite reason not to, money, time, regulations, resources, and so on. So we recommend you embrace whatever constraints you have and start anyway. Instead of treating these constraints as a reason something can't be done, they can be embraced to drive more focus, more innovation, and bolder goals. To deal with cobalt shortages, Panasonic reduced the cobalt content of its vehicle batteries to less than 5%, and the company is working towards entirely cobalt-free batteries. Level 3 is aimed at helping organizations innovate in the sustainability sphere using a combination of design thinking and cloud-enabled technology to invent sustainability solutions that are missing and so desperately needed in the world. Sustainability requires a massive global energy transformation that will impact everything we do. Companies and organizations will invent and harness new forms of energy. Think small nuclear reactors, fusion, hydrogen, and more. The concept of a circular economy will finally be implemented. In a circular economy, things are made and consumed in a way that minimizes our use of the world's resources, cuts waste, and reduces carbon emissions. Products are kept in use for as long as possible through repairing, recycling, and redesign, so they can be used again and again. Some companies have started this journey to circularity with battery and e-waste reprocessing of minerals, rare earth minerals, gold, titanium, molybdenum, and moving on to machine and construction components and waste, to reusing and reprocessing fabric instead of dumping mountains of clothing in the Atacama Desert, in Chile, or in Sub-Saharan Africa, through to using waste and byproducts from agriculture as raw materials or energy. Our current resource requirements are the equivalent of 1.6 Earths. So we need to get this right. Zero North, a Danish technology company, provides ship captains with data to optimize routing and to avoid storms or navigate with the wind and the vessel's back to reduce fuel consumption. Several companies are working on recycling programs for batteries, yet other companies are developing ways to leverage geospatial data from satellites to understand vegetation, water flow and availability, biodiversity across regions, soil health, and many other areas of nature-based solutions. There are virtually limitless areas where this can be applied. For instance, Convoy optimized truck efficiency. In the US, truckers drive billions of miles and 40% of these trips are without cargo. Convoy uses data, artificial intelligence, and machine learning to ensure returning trucks have loads, reducing the amount of empty trucks on the highway. And this one with a smaller company, Circle Gas. They're addressing the problem of indoor pollution caused by cooking with expensive charcoal and kerosene 
in low-income households in many parts of the world. This is a cost-effective pay-as-you-go model to purchase cooking gas. Circle Gas developed a solution that uses an IoT smart meter on the gas cylinder to measure and communicate fuel consumption, including data on when to schedule a replacement cylinder delivery. To conclude, we've seen that constraints and guardrails can be embraced instead of being blockers to innovation. By using design thinking and cloud technology, organizations can successfully invent sustainability solutions.